is headed to ministry. Pastor Robert Stairs. Let the master set you free. Let the master bring his peace to you. He ain't asking you to live this thing. He's asking you to trust him so he can show you how. If you're going to walk in what I teach you, you have got to make it your foundation. How is love for That is your life. Jesus is the most astounding. Watch it. As he is, so are we. Welcome again to Jesus is Answer Ministry broadcast. I'm Pastor Robert Steele. I tell you, we've had a glorious week this week teaching the Word of God. And I've been teaching part two on, this, on an established heart. And I'm telling you that you will never, ever, ever be the same. Uh, God is calling you in a walk above what you can do in your own strength. Psalm 112, verse 6 and 7 and 8 says, Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. He, he shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, unchanged. And listen, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid till he see his desires upon his enemy. When fear is there, your heart's not established if you don't make that fear leave. People in the body of Christ as a whole, I'm talking about the majority of them, struggle too much. Struggle. And, and I know baby Christians are supposed to struggle some, <laughs> but once you get taught what to do, you, you're not supposed to keep struggling. The reason people struggle and live in weaknesses, struggles, because all of us going to get them, but you don't have to live in them, is they don't have a word. They don't speak something Jesus said. They're not doing what Jesus said. It's just that simple. John 15, verse 13, Jesus said, their hearts are waxed gross, their ears are closed, they they they." Ears are dull of hearing. The eyes they have closed. Lest at any time they shall see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their heart, and be converted. Converted is when you repent and turn to God's love in Jesus on the cross and his holiness, which is Jesus telling you how to live. Jesus said, I'll heal thee. I'll heal thee. <laughs> he said, in, in, in Luke 6, verse 47, whoever come to me, hear my sayings and do it them, I'll show you to whom he's like. He says, he's like a man which built a house, dig deep, laid a foundation on the rock. When the flood arose and beat Bohemly on that house, could not shake it, could not shake it. Too many people's lives are being shook because they're not founded on the rock. Coming to Jesus, hearing what he say, believe and speak that, See, get it in your mouth, get it in your heart, and then do what he tell you to do. If you, I'm telling you, saints, people are coming to the Lord with lip service. They're speaking this great trust in the Lord that he don't even show up. They have this honor for the Lord in singing and worship and praise, but they live by the commandments of men. Look, look at, look at, uh, in, in, in John 12, verse 37. But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. Can you imagine that? That the saying of Isaiah, the prophet, might be fulfilled, which spake, Lord, who have believed our report? And to whom have the arm of the Lord been revealed? Who has really <laughs> seen the power of God really be revealed when you can live this every day? The people who let Jesus tell them what to do. They believe and speak what Jesus said and then go do what Jesus tell them to do. This is the only time you'll be healed. 
This is the only time you will produce Jesus in your life. Therefore, they could not believe because Isaiah said again, listen to this, in John 12, verse 30, verse 40, he had blinded their eyes, hardened their hearts. Now, if you look over in your margin, he, he's, he's hardened, and that means he permitted their hearts to be hardened because of their choice. That they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. Now, here's the quote now. Jesus quoting again from Isaiah. Then he said it out of his own mouth. Jesus said in Matthew 15, 10, hear and understand. Hear and understand this. It's not what go in you that will defile you, but what come out. Understand, if you're not believing and speaking what Jesus said, then doing what he said, then the quality of God's life is not going to work in your life. And you're going to have excuses and the commandments of men. These things spake Isaiah when he saw his glory and he spake of him. You got to see his glory, the glory that was in Jesus that lived perfect on earth as a man where that you spake of him. You speak what he said. You do what he said, just like Jesus did the Father. He spoke what he heard the Father say. He spoke what the Father taught him, and he did what he saw the Father do. We have to do Jesus the same way. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers, also many believe on him. See, <laughs> they, they saw those miracles. They believed that Jesus was sent from God. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him. This is a spirit of fear on people that will lock you up from doing what Jesus tell you to do. They'll try to get you to hate people. Feel the way they feel about somebody instead of doing what Jesus, loving them as Jesus loved you, judging that Jesus died for all and all were dead, that we henceforth not live unto ourselves, but unto Jesus who died and rose from the dead. 2 Corinthians 5, 14, 15. And because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him. Lest they should be put out of the synagogue. Now listen at what Jesus said. They love the praise of men more than the praise of God. This is teaching the commandments of men. Try, people will come and try to get you to agree with their darkness. I tell them real quick, they ain't, they ain't right. Because I'm looking to hear Jesus' voice. I know what works. I've seen what works. Jesus cried in verse 44 and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that seeth me, seeth God who sent him. Let me, let me, let me go back uh, to John 12. John 12, verse 44. And I want to read this in the New Living Translation. Jesus shouted to the crowds, If you trust me, you are trusting not only me, but also God who sent me. For when you see me, you are seeing the one who sent me. Jesus said, I am come. See, what he's telling them is, I bring God to you. When you're believing in Jesus to, to believe and speak what he say, you really are trusting God who said it. See, you got to know that. <laughs> you can't get no word from God that don't come through Jesus. I am come as a light to shine in this dark world. So that all who put their trust in me will no longer remain in the dark. What does it mean to put their trust in him? You got to reverence and respect what he say and put that in your mouth. 
and get it in your heart and then do what Jesus tell you to do every day. <laughs> and, and quit speaking stuff that don't have nothing to do with him. I'm trying. I'm doing my best. Oh, yeah, something's working. Jesus works. You don't have nothing he said. Trust in the Lord. You can't trust in the Lord and you're not standing on something he said. One of the greatest attacks of the devil is your confidence. The train of your faith, work of patience. The devil wants you and I to cast away our confidence. And the scripture tells us in Hebrews chapter 10, to cast not away therefore your confidence, which has great recompense or reward. Hebrews 10, verse 35. Your confidence is what Jesus say to you that you're believing and speaking out of your mouth. That's what the devil's after. He wants to bring thoughts to your mind that if you don't bring them into captivity, the only way you can bring thoughts into captivity is you're remembering to do what Jesus tell you to do. If you're forgetting what Jesus tell you to do and you're forgetting what you got taught by the Lord, then you you can't you can't live in his victory. You can't live in it. And so we as believers, we we have to understand uh, what the Lord is telling us. Now in uh, second, I'm sorry, Ephesians chapter four, verse seventeen. Listen, get me this word. This I say, therefore. And testify in the Lord that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. See, you don't want our minds to be in the vanity of still living the way that we used to live. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of Christ. Now watch this. The life of Christ is the words that come from Jesus' lips. Peter said, you have the word of eternal life. See, not just eternal life, but the words that we got to get in our mouth and in our heart and do what those words tell us to do. Being alienated from the life of God, Ephesians 4, 18, through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Saints, the devil want to keep the Christian blind. He want us to fear. I'm going to tell you this, saints. I know we've had killings and murderers and in our schools. And, but I'm telling you, we need to teach people. You need to learn the authority of the name of Jesus. Christians can take that name and make devil stop. Y'all can come up with whatever you want. But you ain't gonna stop the devil without the name of Jesus. We need to teach people. Y'all bring me on your program. I'm gonna tell you what the Lord said. That without the name of Jesus, you're not gonna make these devils stop. People in schools need to learn how to pray. God is able to keep us. He said he would. The Lord said in Psalm 91. And God, listen, <laughs> the Lord is the answer. Ain't nothing else to answer but Jesus. He said, because in 14, Psalm 91, because he set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he known my love my character, my mercy, my kindness, my power. He shall call upon me 
and I will answer him. And watch this. I will be with him in trouble and deliver him. Glory to God. Ain't nobody will talk like that but the Lord. And honor him with long life when I satisfy him and show him my salvation, which in the Hebrew is my deliverance. Saints, with all the evil going on in the world and in our schools, wake up, people. I'm saying this in love. We took prayer out. We took the name of Jesus out. People need to grow up and see, thou shall not kill. Even if you ain't saved, you need to see that every day. When I grew up and went to school in the 60s and 70s, we never saw nobody get killed in school. We never even heard of it. And when that prayer came out and they took the Ten Commandments out, they read those Ten Commandments to us every single day. <laughs> it put a fear in us, a reverence in us, not to kill. God said, don't kill. We just fight. Jesus. Listen, Jesus needs to come back in the school. And man is coming up with all kind of ideas. And, and it's the answer is Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the answer. He says, Christians have no business going to school and being afraid somebody going to come in and kill your child. You're supposed to plead the blood of Jesus over that child and speak the word of God and release the ministering angels around those children. Tell y'all saints, we need to preach Jesus more. You can stand up with a man with a gun and say, in the name of Jesus, I bind that spirit in you. That man, that devil and that man can't shoot you. Them bullets won't come now your dwelling. You speak that name. You believe in that name. And the Lord, see, Jesus can't tell us in, in John, 7, uh, 12, John chapter 14, verse 27. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And we're supposed to go around and be afraid. See, when you don't know Jesus, that's why you're afraid. Let me get ready to close. I want to pray with you all. Let me read this again. The Lord told me that <laughs> I taught on this yesterday. In, in James 1, 22, be ye doers of the word, not hearers only deceiving your own selves. See, a hearer is somebody, that, yeah, I know, yeah, I know, yeah, I know. Well, you know you want to it, yeah, I know. See, and they're, they're, they're deceived. And you're always deceiving your own selves when you don't do what he tell you. The only way you're going to understand with your heart and see with your eyes and hear with your ears is when you turn and start doing and believing and speaking and doing what Jesus tell you to do. Well, you're going to struggle. You're going to struggle. I'm teaching you. The Bible said in verse 24, for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he like a man behold his natural face in the glass. And, and, and he beholdeth himself and go up his way and straightway forgetting what man of man he was. But whoever looketh in the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man, woman, shall be blessed in their deeds. But if any man among you seem to be religious and does not know how to talk, he does not know how to speak what Jesus said. He deceiveth his own heart and his religion is vain. Stuff is vain when Jesus don't make it work. 1 John chapter 3. And I'm closing with this. I want to pray with you all. Verse 21 in John 3. Beloved, if our heart condemn us, 
note against us, find fault with us. Let me read you this uh, in the Amplified Bible. 1 John 3, 21. If our heart condemn us, then God is greater than our hearts and knoweth all things. If our heart condemn us not, then you have confidence. You got to resist those guilty feelings. You got to resist those, those words that are coming from your mouth about and thoughts about you and not Jesus. And whatever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another. As the master gave us a commandment. Here in the Amplified Bible, I want to read this verse before I pray with y'all. <laughs> and beloved, if our consciences, our hearts do not accuse, I'm sorry, verse 20. Whenever our hearts in tormenting, self-accusation make us feel guilty and condemn us, we are in God's hand. For he is above and greater than our consciences, our hearts, and he knows, perceives, and God knows and perceives and understands everything. Nothing's hidden from him. And beloved, our consciences, our hearts do not accuse us. If they do not make us feel guilty and condemn us, we have confidence, complete assurance, and boldness before God. And we receive from him whatsoever we ask. Because we watchfully obey his orders, observe his suggestions and injunctions, and follow his plan for us, and habitually practice what is pleasing to him. And this is his order. This is his command. This is his injunction. That we should believe, put our faith and trust, and adhere and rely on the name, the love, and the authority of his son, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And that we should love one another just as he commanded us. Hallelujah. Saints, to start in this, all you watching is you have to repent. You have to turn away from you, your darkness, your sins, and receive forgiveness and make a commitment to follow Jesus. He'll give you the strength to do it, but you have to make the commitment. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. He took your sins away. While you were yet a guilty, he already loves you. And there's only one sin he's holding against you. And that's the sin of not giving Jesus your heart where he can tell you what to do. Say this prayer with me. Mean it from your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you're the son of God. God sent you on this earth to show me his love. I believe in my heart. When Jesus died on the cross, he took my sins away and rose from the dead on the third day. Say this out loud. Come in my heart, Lord Jesus, and save me and change me and give me eternal life. I repent of my sin, the sin of unbelief. I turn. And put my trust in you, Jesus. I receive forgiveness. I turn from darkness to light. From the power of Satan, I turn to God's power. He's great. Thank God. Say it out loud. Thank God. Through Jesus, my sins are forgiven for now. Hallelujah. Praise God. You ain't never going to be the same. I want to pray with y'all that are sick. That are bound, that are hurting. The answer is to hear Jesus, believe and speak what He said, and do what He tell you. By the authority of the head of the church, the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, be healed in your bodies. I curse every sickness. Put your hand to the screen. I loose you from that spirit of infirmity. I command those devils to loose your mind. Take the hands off you. You don't belong to them no more. You've made Jesus your Lord. And 
Father, I thank you that you'll put them in a good church home. I thank you, Lord, for healing every sickness and every disease. You're greater, Lord Jesus. I know you can do it. And I thank you and praise you. I give you all the glory, Lord, for your mighty power working right now. So I praise, I speak in Jesus' name. Peace be unto you. In Jesus' name. I tell you, I want to invite you to come to church Sunday. <laughs> Even if you don't come to Jesus' end, but I know what you're going to get there is true. People come there, their lives excel spiritually. A lot of people want to teach you how to make money. I, I, I'm, I, that ain't my job. My job is to teach you how to walk with Jesus, be a shepherd over your soul. And the Holy Ghost will teach you how to prosper. Amen. I'll teach you from the word. But I'm telling you, the Lord, a lot of stuff people are trying to do in people's lives, the Lord, the one really need to be doing this. Amen. So our service times, 9 o'clock Sunday school, 10 o'clock regular service, and then 7 o'clock p.m. on Thursday. But come this weekend. You need to come to church. Call that number on the screen, 615-237-9802. Call us and let us know what the Lord did for you. Write us, email us, robberscaleministry.org. Let us know what the broadcast has been doing in your life. <laughs> I know people write us all the time. Let us know how the broadcast has been a blessing. Also, I want to make available uh, this six CD series. Now, listen, I'm giving a special this week. It's part one and part two. And what 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 I'm going to do is, is, is let you get, if you buy one of them, they're 30. But if you buy two this week, they're $40. And I'll, I'll give you a free copy of my book. I really want to get these into your hands. And this is this is just a tremendous deal. So if you order these today, make your checks and money orders to Jesus at some ministries. Post office box 292112 Nashville, Tennessee, 37229. And so for love, get for $40. I'm going to send you both of these, part one, part two, and a free copy of my book. So y'all order these. Now you can go online to robertscaleministry.org. And you can use your credit card and order these online. And don't forget, we stream all our services live at robertscalesministries.org. Amen. <laughs> well, I want to thank my friends and partners. Thank you so much for helping me to preach the gospel, saints. You know, many people are, are being saved and delivered and lives being changed. And many of you all, God, have tremendously blessed. So thank you for helping me to get the gospel out. I love you and I'm praying for you. Also, my prayer for you is that you will know the love of Christ that passes knowledge and be filled with all the fullness of God. From Jesus' answer ministry, I'm Pastor Rob. Still remember, as Christ loved you on the cross, go live that toward everybody. Have a blessed weekend. We'll look forward to seeing you next week. Bye-bye.